Biggest Loser? Has that been taken? No, I think I think that's free. We don't have to worry about any copyright infringements. <laughs> Crooked Lawyers, say we're good. Let's All do right, it. Right, say we're good. <laughs> I'm Tommy Vitor. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. And today we're going to be drafting the GOP long shots and no shots. That's right. A lot of them. So, Brian, uh, in 2016, we here at Pod Save America boldly predicted that Hillary Clinton would win the presidency and that there was no chance Donald Trump could ever become president. That's right. Oops. So we're out of the prediction business. No more predicting who's going to win. But it's really fun. <laughs> Which brings us to today. <laughs> it's really fun to predict who is going to lose first. Why? Because these days, running for president isn't really about trying to be president for right. a lot of these candidates. They want press attention. They want to sell books. They want speaking fees. They want you to tune into their shitty radio show, maybe a cabinet gig. So that's why we're drafting Republican long shots and no shots in the order of who's dropping out first. Let's do it. I'm going to flip a coin, determine who goes first. Brian's going to call in the air. Let's go heads. Tails never fails. Hell yeah, I'm excited about this one. All right. My first pick, the biggest loser, the person who I think is Dunzo first, is Francis Suarez. Wow, okay. Let's watch a clip. Will you be talking about the Uyghurs in your campaign? What, the what? The Uyghurs. What's a Uyghur? Okay, we'll come back to that. Uh, let me, you won't be. You got to get smart on that. You got to get smart on a lot of things, bud. Uh, he is such a loser that I actually forgot he had said that. The Uyghurs, for those who are wondering, are a, uh, a Muslim minority group in China that's being brutally suppressed. The U.S. has called it a genocide. Suarez is the mayor of Miami. It's a mayoral job with no actual power, as far as I can understand. He created a cryptocurrency that is now all but worthless. There is corruption allegations, and he once called for airstrikes on Cuba. Well, it seems like he's positioning himself pretty well to win the Republican <laughs> primary, so I don't know if that's going to help your cause or hurt it. Uh, here, here's the only reason that I, that I may disagree mm. with this, and I'm, I'm jumping, jumping right in and, and undermining Tommy's first choice. But he has no name ID. The only reason for him to be in this race in the first place is to try and raise his name ID, and so he doesn't have a lot of incentive to just jump out right away. I mean, he wants to stay in there as long as humanly possible just so that some people know who he is. He for knows sure. he's not going to be president, for sure. but he wants people to know who he is. So for my first choice, mm -hmm. I'm going to go with Asa Hutchinson. Ooh, Let's one. play the clip on this one. I expect uh, the candidates to address this honestly and seriously and uh, it, with due respect for our institutions of justice. Can I cut to the chase, Governor? Are you saying your other opponents in the field are gutless? <laughs> well, I'm going to say that they've made a political calculation that they don't want to offend Donald Trump. They don't want to offend anybody in the base. Here's the thing. Asa Hutchinson, first of all, he's too old to have like a long political career ahead of him. So I don't think yeah. he's doing it for the name ID. He's, uh, first off, a little known Republican from, from which state? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Arkansas. He's, he's running in the anti-Trump lane, which unto itself is a very narrow lane yeah, in the Republican lane. Party. He also worked for George W. Bush as head of the DEA and undersecretary of the Department of Homeland Security. And as we know, in the modern GOP, George W. Bush is a lib cuck. Yeah, that's uh, right. I think that's a great pick. Uh, and I would have taken it if you had taken my other guy, which is my second pick. I'm going with Will Hurd. Mm -hmm. We're joining a very crowded field, as you can see there from that picture. Uh, how do you pull this off? Well, look, the way you pull it off, and, and the thing that I thought was interesting today is that within minutes of me announcing, Donald Trump and the DNC were attacking me, which is a sign that they think I'm, I'm dangerous. And the thing that I've learned you know, my entire time um, as an adult is the Republican Party is supposed to be the big tent party. Uh, but unfortunately, right now, we're stuck in these echo chambers and we're only preaching to the choir oh he's a shoe-in for republicans 1984 campaign i'll tell you what <laughs> yeah so will Hurd, former member of congress from texas 23 he spent nine years in the cia i actually interviewed him once on pod save the world genuinely nice guy thoughtful as you saw in that clip which i think is a death sentence in this primary yeah. so he's also refusing to sign the uh republican loyalty pledge i don't know if he's going to get into the debates if he doesn't get if he doesn't do that if he doesn't get enough donations, who doesn't hit the polling threshold. The irony also of us pretending like it's an issue that Will Hurd won't sign that loyalty pledge when Donald Trump very clearly will not sign that it's... loyalty pledge it really does go to show the double standard in the it Republican does. Party. Okay, so my next choice, I'm going to go with Larry Elder. Ooh, interesting. Okay. For that clip. 
The tension of a court show. You're both degenerates and you disgust me. The emotion of a talk show. Now hold up everybody, I'm talking over here. The excitement of a game show. With cash prizes for those who are morally right. $2,000 the accuser. This show isn't about small claims. You don't do something to somebody that you don't want done to you. It's about the difference between right and wrong. That is my judgment. Moral court, where it pays to be right. So I hadn't actually even seen this clip before I made this choice, but it actually lends itself perfectly to this choice. When Larry Elder became the presumptive Republican nominee in the California recall, he stayed in because he had all the attention on him. He yeah. clearly wants all of that attention, as Absolutely. you can see from that clip. I think that it worked in California because he was the, the, the foil, the Republican choice, contrary to Gavin Newsom. But in this instance, where he's going to be so overshadowed by the Donald Trumps and the Ron DeSantis's and, and all of the other candidates who have better name ID than him, I think he's going to tire of that pretty quickly and he's going to drop out pretty fast. So I have Larry a lot further down on my list because he's a crazy person and a right-wing radio host and a shock jock, basically. He's an open misogynist. He said that women know less than men about political issues, economic, and current events. Okay, buddy. Uh, he called climate change a myth. He was accused of spousal abuse. He is only in this, as you said, for press and to get attention, which makes me think he might be able to raise enough money to hang on because he's not actually going to try. I just don't know that when you have donors whose dollars are finite, that they're going to bother giving it to Larry Elder when they can give it to somebody who has even a modicum of a shot in the Republican primary. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. It's, you're, it's tough to compete with the Trump base. My next pick, I'm going with Doug Burgum. Here's a clip. We need a leader who's clearly focused on three things, economy, energy, and national security. And that is why today I'm officially announcing I'm running for the president of the United States of America. Okay, that was Doug Burgum, uh, a name that I I just, I literally can't make my brain remember his name, <laughs> no matter how many times I try. And I haven't tried that many times, <laughs> admittedly. He's the 33rd governor of North Dakota. He's a rich dude. He invested in some software company, became the president, blah, 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 blah. Kind of a compelling-ish bio, but here's why I think he's screwed. One, again, no one's ever heard of him. Two, in 2020, he criticized the North Dakota GOP for attacking the LGBT community. And I think, you know, he's tried to become more of a toxic right-wing asshole since then. Yeah. And again, just like, I, no one knows who this goober is. I agree with this pick, and I think the placement is good. I think the only reason he, he'll even be in this far is because he has so much money. He's yeah. so wealthy that he'll be able to fund his campaign. But to what end, I, I have no idea. To what end is the question. Yeah. Okay, so for my next choice, I'm going to choose RFK Jr. Mm. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> That's a fit boy. Did I count eight and a half, Tommy? <laughs> yeah, it was not a lot of push-ups. <laughs> all right, so the only reason he is he's in this spot and not even further, because this is all a publicity stunt. Joe, RFK Jr. is not be, going to become the Democratic nominee. And, and uh, we should point out, yeah, we, <laughs> we're sensibly ranking Republicans, but like he's running for president on the Democratic side, but he's not a Democrat. Right. And all he's, his money's coming from Republicans. He's not a Democrat. The, the, the whole prospect of an RFK Jr. presidency is a figment of the Republicans' imagination. Yeah. They're, yeah. They, they want to make this guy a thing so badly that they're practically falling over themselves to manifest this presidency in, into existence. Every time they do try to elevate him, it just becomes more and more clear that he is not a Democrat. Not for nothing, but you don't go on Joe Rogan's podcast to, uh, to, to reach the liberal base. I have him much later in my draft because I think he is running just to spread toxic, dangerous disinformation about vaccines. Like That yeah. is the thing that animates him. I, I agree. And I think the reason that he's so successful right now at breaking through in the media cycle is because there is still the prospect that he could pose some type of a, a challenge to Joe Biden. And once it becomes clear that Biden's going to lock up the nomination, I think that'll go away and he'll stop getting all this free press that he's looking for. Yeah, he's just going to cause a lot of problems. I will say, for a guy who won't take a vaccine, he does seem to be pretty comfortable with uh, HGH. Yeah. <laughs> Or yeah. some sort of steroid. Because yeah. I've seen pictures of him when he was younger, and like in college. He was kind of a beanpole. Yeah. That doesn't just happen. No, no, not at all. Not when you're doing eight push-ups. Yeah. My next pick, I'm going with Chris Christie.
People in the Republican Party and quite broadly across America are tired of having political candidates who are snake oil salesmen who just don't tell them the truth, who tell them whatever they think they want to hear at the moment um, and then don't fulfill any of those promises. They've lived that in the Republican primary. I was there in 2016 mm -hmm. when uh, Donald Trump said he was going to repeal and replace Obamacare and failed to do it. When he said he was going to build a big, beautiful wall across the entire border of Mexico and that Mexico was going to pay for it. We've got a quarter of a wall and not one peso from Mexico. When he said he was going to balance the budget in four years and added uh, $6 trillion to the national debt. So we all know Chris Christie. He is a uh, shameless attention hog. He hates it when traffic flows smoothly on bridges. <laughs> These days, he is hammering Trump. It's fun to watch. The Republicans hate it. He's also hammering Jared Kushner and Ivanka for getting paid billions by the Saudis and being shameless grifters. Ultimately, I think Christie is going to stick around for a while, probably until New Hampshire, because I think he'll make the debates. I think he'll hit the polling and donation thresholds and have enough small dollars to keep going but not win. Even Stephen A. Smith was pitching his followers to like give Christie one buck to get him on that debate stage. Was it, was it just Stephen A. Smith? It was me as well. <laughs> yeah, great minds think alike, <laughs> embrace debate. But, you know, look, I, I don't think Christie is going to attract any of the Republican base. I think he's a chance of getting some voters in New Hampshire where it's more independents voting in the Republican primary. Yeah, I agree with that. And he's definitely going to push out all the other anti-Trump Republicans like Asa Hutchinson and Will Hurd and all those people yeah. um, just because, of, you know, by virtue of who he is. Yeah, he is name ID. All right, for my next choice, I'm going to go with Tim Scott. Let's watch this clip. Yes, sir. Would you support a federal ban on abortions? I would simply say that um, the fact of the matter is when you look at the issue of abortion, one of the challenges that we have, we continue to go to the most restrictive conversations without broadening the scope and taking a look at the fact that I'm 100 percent pro-life. Uh, I never walk away from that. But the truth of the matter is that when you look at the issues on abortion, I start with the very important conversation I had in a banking hearing when I was sitting in my office and listening to Janet Yellen, the Secretary of the Treasury, talk about increasing the labor force participation rate for African-American women who are in poverty by having abortions. If, if you were wondering the extent to which huh. Republicans have to twist themselves into pretzels to try to appeal to these fractured elements of the Republican base, it is Tim Scott being asked a question about abortion and eventually getting to the point where he brings up Janet Yellen at a banking hearing. I considered having him drop out after Ron DeSantis. And now that I watched that clip, I'm glad I didn't. Yeah. That was not not ready for prime time. Painful to watch. Yeah. At the same time, I kinda I kinda get where he's coming from because whatever you say to appeal to the base to have even a shot at winning in the Republican primary, you are sinking yourself in a general election. He's a deeply religious guy, very conservative. You know, a lot of people say he's a very nice guy. I think all of that is challenging in a Republican primary because he's not going to be able to run to the right of Trump on policy, as we saw there on, on abortion. The sort of kinder, happier GOP that he's trying to present is not what the base wants. Yeah. They like the mean guy who owns the libs. So, yeah, I, I, you know, he's in a tough spot here. My next pick for dropping out is Nikki Haley. Anyone is better than President Kamala Harris. Anyone. I plan on being that person that takes on Kamala, but I'll tell you right now, every Republican should be signing that. This yeah. is not the time to get personal. This is not the time to get petty. You, We've got you a mean President safe. Biden, you mean? You well, I think it's President Harris. Yeah. <laughs> you don't you think he's going to be President on the Biden, But what it really means, a vote for President Biden is a vote for, for President right. Kamala Harris. Oh, what a clever attack. <laughs> yeah. You know that Republicans are having a tough time running against Biden when they have to concoct an imaginary president to actually run against. So she's trying to run on her record as governor of South Carolina and as ambassador to the United Nations. It saddens me to say, Brian, that no one gives a shit about the latter job, but especially not Republican primary voters. Yeah. She, I think, presents as a more optimistic face of the party. I think she wants a cabinet job or maybe even to be the vice presidential nominee and will drop out and endorse Trump to get it. So she's yeah. going to build some support and then get in line, is my I, guess. I agree. I think that's a good spot for her. I think also that she's vying for vice president, and so she knows she's not going to win, but I think that she has every incentive to stay in as long as it seems reasonable to do so, so that she can try to ensure herself some further position in her presidential yeah. cabinet. Yeah, build a little more name ID, some credibility yeah. if you make it far in the primary. Look at Mayor Pete, right? He went from right. mayor of a small town in Indiana to the uh, secretary of transportation because he ran a good race and uh, got some votes. For my next choice... I'm going with Mike Pence of Hang Mike Pence fame. That's exactly what I would have chosen. You know, I, 
I'm somebody that I don't really buy into the the rich need to pay their fair share. I mean, when you look at when you look at the, the statistics of where we actually get funding for the government, the top 10 percent of earners in this country. I, I, I think the only reason that Mike Pence would even last this long is because just by virtue of having been Trump's vice president, just by virtue of the name ID he has, he'll stay in for a long time. He also occupies, I guess, this lane of maybe some mild anti-Trump sentiment and also deeply religious uh, sentiment within the Republican primary. Again, there is no lane for him to become president, especially not in a party uh, where they were advocating for his hanging. But, you know, just by virtue of his polling, I think that he'll, he'll stay in for this long. Yeah, I think he basically has one path, which is to try to win enough super religious evangelicals in Iowa. I don't think it's going to work. I think he'll fail and he'll drop out soon after because of statements like that and because he looks like a uh, Westworld robot program to do an impression of Ronald Reagan <laughs> poorly. Half the party wants to hang him. I think he is absolutely <laughs> yeah. screwed. The man yeah. is widely considered to be dumb but ambitious, uh, and I don't really think he has a lot of talent. Yeah. My next pick is Vivek Ramaswamy. Your thoughts on Governor Ron DeSantis? And he so, is the establishment favorite. He, he really is. Um, so look, I want to say that I respect a lot of the things he's done in Florida. I really do. I'm grateful that he's taken a lot of the principles that I've written about in Woke Inc. and elsewhere and, and tried his best to translate that into action with, I think, some real successes under his belt in Florida. But I think if we're talking about somebody who's gonna be representing America across the table of Xi Jinping, you need somebody who has a spine of steel. And I'm just gonna be really honest with you, Ron DeSantis is not that person. He just isn't. Okay, Vivek Ramaswamy, he is a uh, young and even younger looking business dude who is trying to basically spend his way to the presidency. He had an early strategy, kind of like Mayor Pete did in 2020, actually, of just doing tons of interviews. And I think it's paid off and has been smart because, look, we know who he is. We're talking about him. He's got yeah. a bunch of attention. He's gone full, full like Tucker Carlson on foreign policy. He's talking about cutting a deal with the Russians where you basically give them the Donbass region and Ukraine doesn't get in NATO. And the fact that he thinks like Vladimir Putin would agree to all these terms he laid out and abide by them shows how naive he is. Here's the problem. I think he'll stick around because he's self-funding. But at some point, even a really rich guy is like, am I going to cut myself another $10 million check? Yeah. And like, I don't think he's going to make it up in donations to pay himself back. And he'll just decide eventually that this is a, has been a good enough use of money. He's gotten the name ID he wants. His Sell book is books, out there. Right? Yeah. And like, OK, maybe he'll be considered for some sort of cabinet gig. OK. And obviously, for my final choice, I'm going to go with Ron DeSantis. My man. Make America great again. Psych! anything more horrifying it really has shut down drag just produced some of the harshest most draconian laws that literally threaten trans existence congratulations Ron DeSantis mission accomplished you win with all the sort of ripped AI dudes. Yeah, the, the, it's it's just this like this the idol tree that like that envelops the Republican Party. Like they are desperate for just a man. Look, I guess the positive part of that video for them is people are talking about it, right? Maybe attention economy, that's what you want. But it was made by a, a random Twitter account and yeah. then shared by the DeSantis's war room yeah. account. The video compares him to Patrick Bateman, a serial killer from American Psycho, <laughs> yeah. and Jordan Belford, a criminal. I mean, look, like for obvious reasons, Ron DeSantis is the least long shottiest candidate on yeah. this list. He, you know, he's still polling at about a quarter of Republican primary voters. He's got which, like a hundred million dollars. To, to, to be clear, is still a very bad yeah. position. Even if by some miracle he does end up winning this primary, that he's going to make himself completely and and wholly unelectable in the general. He's, oh, absolutely. He's passed a six-week abortion ban. 
then he had some plausible deniability because he had a 12-week abortion ban, opted to go for a six-week abortion ban, which is leagues more draconian. We obviously have this anti-LGBT commercial that his campaign embraced. He's also a super weird human being, Mm -hmm. so it just doesn't exactly bode well for a uh, Ron DeSantis running in a a general election. He's just loading himself up with more baggage every single day. I mean, the worst thing that you mentioned is the six-week abortion ban. He had everything going for him. He he was basically the heir apparent in a party that recognizes how toxic and unelectable Donald Trump is and how much more unelectable he's going to be once all of these uh, further indictments and possible convictions start rolling down. All he had to do was do nothing and just, like, be the other guy. Uh, But instead, every time he opens his mouth, he just makes himself even more unelectable. And Trump has just been kicking the shit out of him. Yeah. And it has worked. All right, so that wraps up our draft in terms of the candidates most likely to drop out first. So with that said, we're all going to take a, we're both going to take a couple seconds here and make our final pitches to you. So Tommy, you went first. You go first. Yeah, listen, I won this one. This is a no-brainer unless you have uh, brain leakage like RFK Jr. from the Wi-Fi. So you got just a clown Mayor Suarez, who's going to drop out immediately. No one is taking him seriously. He's got no chance. You got Will Hurd, who's just too nice a guy to ever win a Republican primary and is probably not going to make the debate stage. Doug Burgum, still can't remember his name, not going to win. Chris Christie, fighting the good fight, punching Trump as hard as he can. Unfortunately, that's the worst possible thing you could do in a Republican primary. Nikki Haley, I think she wants a cabinet job, if not VP. And Vivek Ramaswamy cannot spend all of his money Uh, or else he will be broke. So eventually he will be out of this race. Yeah, a valiant effort. But uh, I think Tommy's list pales in comparison to my list. We've got Asa Hutchinson. Nobody knows where he's from. Too old. He's got nothing that anybody wants. He's got the worst of both sides. He'll be out first. Then we've got Larry Elder, a guy who traffics in straight uh, uh, desperation for attention. He may have uh, caught lightning in a bottle with the California recall, but I don't think he's going to get any attention in this race, and he's going to be out pretty quickly. Then we've got RFK Jr. Uh, it's going to become pretty clear pretty quickly that he's not going to win this Repo- this Democratic primary, and he's going to stop getting all of this attention heaped onto him by the press, who's still wish-casting that he'll go pretty far. Then we've got Tim Scott, too nice, too blah, doesn't, no, he's going to run out of money, he's going to become, it's going to become clear that he doesn't have a shot in hell. Mike Pence, his polling is decent, so if he's fooled himself into thinking that he has a, a chance in this Republican primary now, nothing's going to change as we continue moving forward. He also probably thinks he has some mandate from God, so uh, as soon as his money runs out, he'll eventually recognize that that's not the case. And then, of course, the last one to drop out will be Ron DeSantis, who is the least of a long shot compared to Trump, but at the same time has done a pretty good job of making himself completely unelectable in a general election. Amen to that. Okay, so again, remember, you are voting for the list of the biggest losers, the people most likely to drop out first. And what's fun about this one, Brian, is for once, we'll actually get to, to grade ourselves. Yeah. We'll have some real scores to, to compare it to in, I don't know, I guess a year or two. Yeah, I guess we'll we'll, we'll see you guys next year. <laughs> you see after, like, <laughs> South Carolina, maybe? Yeah. So uh, in our last episode, we took a look at campaign gaffes and, in, in, you know, campaign ending failures from history. It was the closest vote ever. I won with 52% of the vote because our audience is very smart, which means I get to offer a punishment for Brian this time. Uh, As you all know, he made me walk around for several days with a Mike Pence tramp stamp on my back, including in front of my wife's parents (laughs) and when I was in New York City for three days. So uh, one of the things we looked at last time, Brian, was a hilarious photo of John Kerry in a bunny suit where he looked like a sperm, according to Rush Limbaugh. So we thought, I don't, why don't we get Brian a bunny suit? <laughs> this is so stupid. Not nearly as stupid as me trying to explain to my wife why this just showed up. <laughs> Here you go, buddy. All right. Look how cute he is. Come on. You're going to love wearing this. Days the only thing going through my head right now is how long things last on the internet. Well, if there was any doubt about how, how committed I am to the Liberal Tears audience, that should put that to rest. And congratulations uh, uh, on being a new MSNBC contributor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, first and last week. Isn't that exciting? Well, with that said, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, Fuck you, Tommy. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Make sure to vote for me because uh, now I want Tommy's head on a stake. (laughs) 